Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on how to do background quilting with your embroidery machine. I'm gonna be using Kimberbell's Cup of Cheer book as my guide today. I'm gonna to show you how to use Kimberbell's background quilting files to quilt your blocks in the hoop. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate with the mitten block from Kimberbell's Cup of Cheer quilt. You're gonna find this on page 14 of the Cup of Cheer book. This video is with the understanding that your background quilting will fit in the size of hoop you have. For example, this mitten one block um, design is a five by seven size, meaning that it's gonna fit in a five by seven hoop. But let's take a look at the background quilting design it suggests in the book. It says four by six inches. Now, what that four by six inch size actually means in block by block quilting is that in order to account for those extra seam allowances, you're actually going to need an embroidery field that will accommodate a four and a half by six and a half inch area for the quilting. No problem. This mitten block, even with the background quilting and the design itself, is definitely going to fit in my five by seven hoop. I can continue on with a block by block quilting method with as big of a hoop as my embroidery field will accommodate. So what happens if the embroidery field required is larger than your hoop? Well, we can take care of that easily with the use of Kimberbell's clear blue tiles. If this applies to you, I encourage you to watch a new video titled, How to Embroider Blocks with Background Quilting When You Have a Small Hoop. No matter what size of hoop you have, you may want to watch my video titled, How to Combine Background Quilting and Designs on Your Embroidery Machine. That short tutorial will give you three methods for combining Kimberbell's background quilting with the applique or the fill design on top of it. So let's go ahead and start with this tutorial with the assumption again that you have already watched how to combine both background quilting and designs together first. Don't forget, if that part is new to you, please view that tutorial. Once you've combined the designs using one of the three methods I demonstrated in the video, it is now time to stitch out your cute blocks. I'm going to show you how I did this with the mitten one block found in Kimberbell's Cup of Cheer project. And although this example comes from Cup of Cheer, the technique is the same for any Kimberbell project where you are stitching your background quilting first and then adding your design on top. After you've hooped your stabilizer, you're going to first stitch a placement line for your batting directly on the stabilizer. Second, place your batting down to cover the outline and then proceed to your second stitch. This is the stitch we call the tack down. As a side note, if you're wondering what size to cut your batting for this step, there's a few ways you can find out. All you need to do is make sure that your batting is larger than the placement outline. If you wanna be conservative with your batting, then a chart is also found in the download of your background quilting design, and there you can find what size to cut that batting. Another way to figure this out would be to simply go to the last steps of the block where you square up your design. As you can see in the book here, I look at the trimming instructions at the end, and it tells me to trim it down to four and a half by six and a half inches. Well, my rule of thumb is that for the batting size, I always go up about a half an inch larger. So in this case, I would cut my batting piece at five by seven. And if you compare that to what it says in the downloadable chart, you're gonna see that the batting size, uh, cut size is the same. So we've now talked about the size of your batting. And once that tack down has been stitched, you're going to remove the hoop from the machine and trim away any extra batting. So here's where you're gonna be saying to yourself, oh, okay, so that's why I did this step. Because you see, by doing this, you won't have batting in your seams when you go to sew your blocks together. It's a really great feature of Kimberbell's block by block quilting method. Next, you're going to stitch the placement outline for your background fabric. Then place your fabric on top and stitch the tack down line. Once that's in place, it's time for my favorite part, which is the background quilting design itself. Following the background quilting, your next steps will be following the directions for the design. In our example here, we are on page 14 of the Cup of Cheer book. I'm going to continue with stitching the placement outline of the mitten. Place my mitten fabric right side up, tape it in place, and stitch the tack down line. Continue with these applique steps as outlined on page 14, and you'll have the most darling mitten block ready to go into your cup of cheer quilt. 
Now don't forget, if you come across a block where your background quilting embroidery field is larger than the hoop size that you have, no problem. You're gonna find the tutorial in a new video titled, How to Embroider Blocks with Background Quilting When You Have a Small Hoop. That's where I'm gonna show you that even with a smaller hoop, you can do these fun background quilting designs with a little help from Kimberbell's Clear Blue Tiles.